Now as we've entered August, the signs of summer's end are beginning to show. The leaves are slowly turning, some even falling and dancing in the wind. And the misty mornings gift a few hours free of the heat, signaling the cooler times to come. But that age is yet to arrive. Each day is still unendurably hot and humid. And I've been stuck inside during the majority of every one. Only free to enter the earth when the sun is lower in the sky. It's during these last weeks of summer when I begin to feel a longing for the earth once again. Similar to how I feel during the winter months. simply wishing to be entangled by nature without limits, and relishing every moment I get to spend with my feet bare against the ground. So in the evenings and early mornings, once the humidity dissipates and the heat stands at bay, I try to catch as much of the summer song as I can. Taking time to be grateful for the green and abundance of the season, because I know it'll all be out of reach once the midday sun comes to rise. This last week I've been spending what time I can tangled up in the wilds searching for new plants to get to know. Unfortunately though, it doesn't come without its risks. And if you occasionally neglect your surroundings like I do, you may, just like myself, come away with your hands and fingers coated in poison ivy blisters. Such a minor issue, I know but aren't those always the most bothersome? However, one thing I've learned from all of my years living here is that nature knows balance. And though some of the wild may take from you or inflict pain and discomfort, others will heal you. When I first began my journey to studying herbalism and natural medicine, I never expected the world shift I would experience. It was like learning to read again, or suddenly understanding a new language. Every time I step out into the world, I see so much more than I ever used to, so much more than I ever even realized was missing. as I now understand the tongue of the wild. So, even though this time of year comes with its limits, I'm trying my best to these days to enjoy what I can, to continue to build that connection with the earth.
Hello there guys, I hope you're all doing well. Right now I'm waiting on my bread to rise and the oven to get up to temperature and I thought I'd just sit down for a second to say hello and talk about a few other things. Today and the last few days I've been pretty busy working on filming and editing for my other channel. Just yesterday I finalized a video on some of my favorite summer herbs and the ones I've been working with most as of late, like groves and peppermint. And this morning I've been spending a lot of time researching and just deep diving into some new herbs. These herbal based videos are always so fulfilling to me and I love getting the chance to create them and I'm so grateful that those of you over on my Patreon were so keen on me making more. So next up on the docket I want to make a video detailing the journaling process of an herb and some of the general things I like to keep in mind and take note of when I deep dive into a new herb at the start of every lunar cycle. And now that I've finally settled on a book design, I have a lot of information to transfer over to that format, so I thought, why not make a video on it? But anyways, that's something to worry about later. As I was just sitting here waiting for my bread to rise, I finished going through all of those beautiful, kind comments you guys left for me on my last vlog, and I just wanted to say thank you. I don't really know how to put to words how much I deeply appreciate your kindness and your support. Things have still been a little bit difficult as of late, but I'm feeling so much better now about making videos and just kind of talking to you guys again like this. One of the things that I've been struggling with lately is that lack of personal connection I have with you all now that my channels have grown so much. Back in the beginning, it was so easy for me to keep up with all of your comments and I was able to respond back to everybody. But now that's not really possible anymore and I really miss having that personal connection with you all. And I think that lack of personal connection made creating videos and receiving negative feedback harder because I didn't really feel like I had people who really cared about what I created. But you guys really showed me that that wasn't true and I really appreciate that and it means so much to me. You all are such kind and loving souls and I just wanted to thank you for that. And thank you for this new spark of creative excitement I have again. Something that I've been really needing lately. Especially now with how hot it's been. I've been spending basically 90% of my time this week just indoors editing and researching. Trying my best to just stay busy during the hotter hours of the day. And I've really only been able to go outside in the mornings and evenings and even then that isn't always possible. So, due to this limited contact, I've been really missing the outdoors, and I'm feeling a bit of that disconnect that I do during the colder months while the Earth sleeps. But as always, I've been trying to find ways to reforge that connection by crafting with what nature has to offer. And as you probably saw in the beginning of this video, I've been dealing with an awful lot of poison ivy from some carelessness on my part last week. So I whipped up a little jewelweed salve to help with some of the blisters. Jewelweed itself is a common folk remedy for poison ivy and it's something that I've used for myself for years. Luckily I'm not one to react too terribly to poison ivy unless I come into contact with a significant amount, so typically it doesn't take much to treat it. But since this time it was interlaced between my fingers and all across the palms of my hands, I decided to come at it a little more consistently than just putting a fresh poultice on it every time I come across the plant. And lucky for me, a patch of this beautiful, beautiful plant decided to call this bare area in the garden right next to the blackberries home, so it didn't take long for me to harvest quite a bit. And after consistently treating my hands now for a few days, it's actually rather incredible to me how much better they're doing. So I will definitely be writing this recipe down below if you're interested, and if you get some poison ivy, I've got a little cure. But anyways, it's, it's simple things like this that always bring me so much joy, and even though I've been working with natural medicine for a long time now, it never ceases to amaze me.
Hello there you guys. I just finished up some coursework and two more herbal experiments I've been wanting to try as of late. The first one was shared by Jennifer over on my Patreon page and it's a laundry detergent made from ivy. I'm always very eager to try to create something useful from what is simply gifted to us by the earth. So this here very quickly sparked my interest and was actually super simple to make. So for any of you interested, I will link the original video and recipe down below. And in addition to this, I began a slow infusion of plantain oil. As of late, I've been falling more and more in love with the medicinal uses of this plant, though I do have some reservations on it. Medicinally, plantain is a beautiful remedy for bee stings and skin irritation, especially when it involves swelling of some kind as the leaf is rather astringent. Thus, it's very helpful in reducing pain and inflammation. And as I'm somebody that gets stung by bees all the time, I'm very grateful that it grows in just about every pasture and field in my area. However, with that being said, the plantain that grows here is also very commonly known as white man's foot or white man's footsteps, a name given to it by the native people back when the white settlers were first arriving on this continent, as the plant that is not native here arrived with them and followed them just about everywhere they went. Which makes a lot of sense, especially since the plant seems to be happiest along pathways, and personally I find it to be most prevalent along the tractor trails and footpaths in this area. But because of its history here in America, its energy does seem a little bit off-putting to me sometimes. And though I do respect the plant for its medicinal uses, I would never go any further with it in my workings. But yeah. I've been doing a lot of apothecary work as of late, if you couldn't tell. As it's something I can do during the hotter hours of the day, but here soon I'll share with you more of my canning and preserving processes, especially since the tomato harvest is coming in. But all that's for another day, and I actually think I'm going to close out this vlog here and get back to some of my coursework until the cooler hours come. But tomorrow I'm going to be giving that laundry detergent a try, and I'll update you guys in my next vlog. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and a lovely week. And once again, thank you so much for all of your loveliness and support. I honestly can't tell you how much it means to me, but I'm going to do my best to show you moving forward.